Welcome back to a video here on Free Will Photos. Today we are going to try and edit this photo with just using the local adjustments tab. As you can see, I did not change anything inside of the tone and color tab. All of the adjustments that I make on this edit today are going to happen 100% over here in the local tab. So here we are on the adjustments tab or the local adjustments tab. And I think the exposure of this image is perfectly fine. So what I want to do with this image is really just bring out some of the color and I'm going to enhance the light. I'm not trying to get a base exposure. I'm trying to do a little bit of dodging and burning. So that's going to be the primary focus of today's edit. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do with this image is start working with the color. Now, as you can see here, there's a lot of green looking tones in here, and I just want to make that green stand out a little bit more. So if I wanted to, what I can do is one, we'll reset that. We'll click on the mask and we'll invert this. And if I scroll down here to the bottom, as I pull up on the saturation, you'll start to see that green really shine through. Because I only want my edit to be in that area, what I need to do is actually set a range mask. Now, if you caught my color range mask tutorial, you already know where I'm going with this. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my eye picker here, and I'm gonna drop it right there on that green. Now that I have my green selected, I'm gonna hit the letter O on my keyboard so I can see what's happening with this mask. I don't have enough selected with this mask, so I need to pull my range up and I may need to invert it and then pull it down so that way it's more fine tuned to just that green. And this is selecting more of what I want to actually edit. So I'm gonna hit the letter O and take a look at what's happening by turning this off and turning it back on. It just brings a nice little punch to the image. If you look at the right side of the image, you can see that there's way more saturation and I'm gonna control that here in a little bit. And then if you look at the left side, it's not as saturated. And all I'm doing is targeting that green across my image. Now, as you all know, probably should add a little bit of feather this just helps it blend a little bit better into your image. So I'll go ahead and turn off that. Um, now, in my opinion, this is a lot of saturation that I had to add, and I still didn't quite get that pop that I was going for, uh, because I'll be honest, the local adjustment tab is not really geared towards doing this. However, since I know that I can just copy this, I'm going to go ahead and copy the mask, add a new adjustment, and then we'll come over here and we'll paste the mask. And then I'll come down here to the bottom. We'll erase that. And then I will add in some more saturation. Now we're really starting to get that, that green pop. All right. And with this one, maybe I'll even throw in a little bit of vibrancy just so that way the green is popping. And it's okay if it's a little strong because all I'm gonna do is come up here to the opacity and pull that slider down. Now, another option that you can always use because on one is so cool is you can change the blend mode. So maybe I wanna change this blend mode to just color. So that way the saturation isn't affecting the luminance value of my photo. That is a personal preference, but as you can see, if I turn this off and turn it back on, it just brings a little bit more oomph to that, that green in my image. So now that I have the greens taken care of in my image, probably does a little bit of good to rename your stuff. All right, so now that I have my edits renamed, it's time to do the next edit that I would like to do, which is I want to enhance the pinks in this image. So following the exact same step, we're gonna click on our mask, hit color range, grab our eye picker, and I am going to select that color, which it didn't do a very good job. So I'm gonna turn that off for a second. And 
we will zoom in. So hit the Z key, we'll click over here. And in fact, I'm gonna target this area right here in the center of the image. So we'll go ahead and reset our exposure so that way it doesn't darken anything because I don't want this to alter the image. Then I'm going to click right here and I feel like that's not quite the color that I want to target. So I'll click here and we'll hit the letter O and we'll pull this down, see if it's targeting the areas that I want. And one of the cool ways of figuring out if you're targeting the right area, if you turn off your mask, you can increase the exposure on the areas that are bright. Those are, that's where your exposure, or I'm sorry, where your um, edit is happening. So as you pull your slider here, left and right, you can really figure out what it is targeting. So now it looks like I'm targeting those areas a little bit better because they are getting brighter. Then of course you want to feather it. And this again, just makes the overall edit smooth. All right. So now I'll reset the exposure. We're going to come down here to our saturation, which is going to increase the saturation. And then we'll back out of the image and zoom out. And then you want to turn this off and on just to see if it's working. All right. So as you can see, all of the more pink looking areas, they start to glow. They start to get a little bit brighter. All right, so now we'll just go ahead and rename this. And now it is time to start working on the light in the image. So I like the background, how everything is isolated. And as you can tell, the main subject is here and everything else is in shadow. So what I want to do is really start to build some contrast in this image. And there's a few ways that you can build that contrast. One, I can just click on an adjustment, hit invert reduce or reset the exposure. And then I could pull around on the contrast slider and you see how that's starting to bring in more contrast throughout the entire image. This is no different than if I had it over here on the develop tab, but the power of having local adjustments is that you can paint in the contrast where you want it to be and you can build it up if you move your, um, the opacity and the flow of your brush while you are painting and that's what we're going to do so what i'm going to do is work with exposure first in the negative aspect and what i like to do when i set my brush is have the mask inverted so it's over the entire image and then i'm looking at the areas of the image that i want to darken which is really here and i know that at 100 percent all of this looks good now this area over here, if I turn off this, I like the light that's down here. I think that that brings some character to the image. And as you look through the image as a whole, you start to find that little space. And I think that that's cool. So I know that I don't want to paint it in over there. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and invert this. I'm going to take my brush and I am going to lower the opacity somewhere around uh, we'll go 50% uh, for for this one for your image. It may be a little bit different and then all I'm gonna do is paint this dark effect over the areas that I want the image to be just a little bit darker all right, and if you notice these are already portions of the image that are dark now in the background I think that that can also be a little bit darker. So I'm just going to paint that over and it's really subtle. Uh, this is all about subtle edits, all about the subtlety in making the image look the way that you want it to. All right. Now, if I turn this off and on, I think you'll be able to see that a little bit. And then I think this is also a little too bright here. So I'm going to darken this because uh, the things that are bright in your image, that's what your viewer looks at the first or as the first thing. So we just want to make sure that we're dimming things down appropriately. All right. And then I think I could even come across this little piece right here. 
because that's not very interesting, right? I want the attention to go here. Now, if I hit the letter O, I don't have a very cool looking mask. However, if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can really see how that's impacting the light in the image and making it a little bit more contrast. Now, what I can also do with this is I can bring this into overlay or soft light, which I don't think it enhances anything in the image. It actually hurts it. Uh, you can also try darken and multiply if you wanted to get a little bit darker. But ultimately, I think normal is doing this photo uh, the most justice. So we'll go ahead and click here and we'll call this burn just because I know that that's the burn layer. So now it's time to do the dodge layer and I'll go ahead and rename this first and I'll use the lighten option inside of on one. And what I want to do is bring more light into this area and this area, because those are the areas that are the most interesting in the photo, in my opinion. So all I'm going to do is paint and I'm still at 50% on this brush and I don't need to paint a whole lot because there was already really good exposure and light. Now, in this area, I'm actually going to bring my opacity down to 25%. Uh, and that's just because I don't need it to be as bright. This is definitely one of those more intimate areas that I think is cool. And I wouldn't mind having a little bit of attention to it, but it is not the main subject, which is right here. And then whenever I do my dodging, I typically like to move my structure slider up a little bit. And then I mess around with the haze, uh, either pulling it down or up just to see which one gives it the, the better look. All right. Uh, in this case, I don't think it's doing much. So I'm just going to leave that where it is and we'll turn this off, turn it back on. Now, what I'm noticing is this isn't very well spread, right? And you can tell that there was some work done, not so much with the shadows, but definitely with the dodging and burning. So I'm going to pull up on my feather because I want to spread those areas out a little bit. And now it doesn't look as obvious. I'll also say that I can pull down on the opacity because I think it's way too, too much going on. Okay. And then I have one last thing that I'll do before I get done with this particular image which is I'm going to bring this down to about half a stop underexposed. It doesn't have to be precise. Uh, and then I also like to pull down the shadows and throw in a little bit of black. And then I bring the structure down quite a bit. And we are going to add in a vignette edges. I'm gonna click, or I'm sorry, that should be vignette center. And then we'll resize this to put it right around here. And then I'll feather this out pretty good. And what this allows for is anything that's in your background that could have been a distraction. Um, it just brings all of the attention right into this area. So there's no question about what the subject is. Now, if you find that that is way too harsh and the, the edit on the outside is too too much you can just bring down the opacity over here until it starts to make sense with your image and that's the beauty of really being able to work inside of local adjustments inside of on one you have so much control over them so here is the before which is a photo that is in my opinion a little undersaturated uh, really nice overall but not what I would expect the image to be. And here is the final version that I will export. It's a little bit more lively and nice. If you found value in today's content, go ahead and smash the like button. If you want to see more, click the video that's on the screen now. And until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.